guys, it's Cindy, AKA The Queen. Um, I told you that there would be some videos where I would have to kind of like narrate because um, at certain parts of my trip, I got caught up in just walking around and just enjoying the parks and not really videotaping as much. And the last video you saw was my day three and I went to Magic Kingdom in the morning, had a great time, rode lots of rides. And then after um, watching the parade, I went back to the um, hotel room and took a break. And then my plan was to go back to Epcot that evening <clears throat> and then explore Epcot a little bit more later on. Um, because I had a five-day park hopper, so I knew that I could go back to Epcot. So I really just wanted to like go in and get like a little taste of what the um, food and wine festival would be like. Um, a lot of those plans ended up going out the window, which you'll see in um, the later videos. But um, I did make it back over. I will say that this was the third day and it was the afternoon. Um, not really sure what time I went back in, but it was still hot. You will walk so much at Walt Disney World that is ridiculous. I think I was clocking in 17,000 steps per day, maybe even a little bit more than that. And so definitely, I wish now that I had prepared a little bit more. I am getting older. I felt it on this trip. <clears throat> so anyway, long story short, I took a break and I caught the bus and went back to Epcot. I will say this, um, the way Epcot is set up now um, and where the buses are, I don't I don't know that we ever really got on a bus to go to Epcot in our previous trips, because we've always driven. But of course, you know, we had taken a plane on this trip, so we had to take the bus. But in all honesty, to me, the buses are like really far away from where the entrance of the park is. Or maybe it was just because, again, I was in pain and it just hurt a lot. And then the other thing is, without fail, every time that I went to Epcot, well, on the three occasions that I went to Epcot, they stopped me to to look in my bag at security. And so <clears throat> when I got in, like I said, it was the afternoon. Most of the time I was going back in around 3.30, 4 o'clock. Um, Epcot closes at nine. So initially I had planned on staying until closing and maybe even watching the fireworks. <sighs> that didn't happen. And like I said, I thought that I would have time to get back into the park and explore some more because my goal, there were a few things on the food and um, food and wine list that I really wanted to try out. So um, the day before I had actually picked up the little booklet that had all of the food and wine stuff in it, but there was one thing in particular that I was determined that I was going to go and eat. Um, and so that was at the top of my priority list. The next on my priority list was I had walked around World Showcase. Um, I had every intention of coming back and riding Spaceship Earth. That didn't happen. I had every intention of coming back and riding Test Tracks and Frozen, and that didn't happen. Basically, <clears throat> that afternoon when I went in, I knew that there was a chance that it was gonna rain. So I was trying to get um, to places that I knew that if it rained, it wouldn't be a big deal for me because I would be inside. That is the one thing I love about Magic Kingdom and Epcot and Hollywood Studios and not so much Animal Kingdom, but definitely Epcot and Magic Kingdom is that there are places that you can go when it rains that are inside rides.
And so <clears throat> my first priority, once I got in, I took some pictures with the professional photographers that are all around Epcot. You can find them easily. They always have on the green shirts. Well, at the time of this um, filming, they wear green shirts. God bless them. They've been out in the sun and the heat and the rain. <clears throat> But they're all over the parks and my daughter had gotten the photo pass set and so we were trying our best to like make sure that we got use of um the money that she has spent on this and so i think that particular day that i was in epcot that afternoon i think she was at magic kingdom if i'm not mistaken and so <clears throat> i got in i took photos with the photo um pass um, photographers. I took pictures at the front of the park. And then I made my way over to what I call the lands. I'm pretty sure they have a, a new name. It's like, I'll put it here if I can remember what it was. Anyway, long story short, I went over to the land that has land and sea. So I went into the land pavilion first and um, I had looked up the time for Soren and Soren was showing that it was going to be um, not that long. But for whatever reason, when I got over there, the time was a lot longer. It was a lot longer than I wanted to wait for. So I said, well, I'll check it later and I'll go over to the land. So I went and I got on the land ride. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. Which I, I really want to take the behind the seeds land um, tour. Um, cause I did see a few people while we were on the boat that looked like they were, um, doing that. And I just, it's just so fascinating to me to kind of, um, ride that ride. It, I, I do, I think we ride it just about every time we go. One, it's usually not a very long line. I will say that by the time I got off of the ride, the line had gotten a little longer because it was raining outside. So I'm glad that I did pick the land pavilion first to go into. <clears throat> I enjoyed getting on the ride and then I said well I'll just go and sit out in the food court area um, I got like a cup of ice water um, if you want to find a place to like kind of eat that's really the time of day that I went like it was around 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon it wasn't very crowded at all as far as the um, the sunshine season Food court is what I think it is. Um, and so I went and found a seat and um, 
I actually got on the phone and called my sister and FaceTime with her and the twins. And I just sat in a chair and kind of talked for a little while. And, and so I told her, I said, I think I'm just going to sit here and chill for a little while. And then I'm going to check to see if the soaring ride, if the time has gone down. And so uh, I sat in a food court and talked to her, talked to the girls, and then I went over and checked Soren. And the time had changed, which was surprising because you could tell more people were starting to come in. So I would have, have, have assumed that the ride would have gotten longer. I don't think I waited in line for more than 15 minutes. Um, for a while there, we were like walking straight on. I thought it was going to be a walk on, but the closer we got to the area where you're going to get up, um, to get on the ride, it was, um, I would say total, we maybe waited 15 minutes, which was good because it had originally been like 45 to 50 minutes. And I was like, yeah, that's a little too long thinking in my head i can always come back and check it out in the morning or you know that afternoon and or late in the evening and so i rode soren which i had not ridden soren oh my goodness it probably had been it had been a couple of years like in the time span of which i had gone on the trips to disney the last couple of times i don't know that we we rode soren and so it was good to ride that. I hate that like a week later, they changed it to the one from California because I think I've only written it one time where it showed um, the California version. And so, yeah, but it was still fun. It's still like, it's just something so neat about riding um, on that ride and like knowing that you like flying over, different areas at one point when we were flying over like the water scene the ocean like it kind of freaked me out a little bit because where I was sitting like was in dead center um I can't remember what row we where were on um I couldn't see anybody's feet so I'm not really sure if we were on the top on the bottom or what but for whatever reason this particular time when I was looking down I was like oh my god I feel like I'm like floating and like I could fall <laughs> so that kind of caught me off guard a little bit but it's still it's still a great ride and I highly recommend it um and especially right if you're going right now in 2023 um at the end of the year and you get to see the California version because um the smells are like fantastic there are some smells when you're watching the the one that I watched but from my understanding and from what I kind of remember the smells of the California one is a little bit a little bit better and so um yeah so I rode Soren and when I came back out it wasn't raining any longer So I headed to Living with the Seas and I rode um, that ride. And it's just a cute ride.
put you together, we can show you don't remember it all. White stripes, it looks kind of like you when they smaller. Yes, have you seen them? See me? Hi, I'm Dory. <laughs> Um, I didn't really stay in the uh, aquarium area. I'm not big on fish and I didn't want to stay for crush. Um, I think if I had had like some family members with me, I probably would have gone in and checked out crush. But for whatever reason, the whole time we were there, when I would check the times for it, it was pretty long of a wait. And so I decided that that was something I could skip on this trip. So I did living with the land. I walked around a little bit. But my main goal was to go over to the food and wine um, section and get the fried pickles.
Now it's at a station that is like right near Test Tracks. And I thought maybe I would even get on Test Tracks, but honestly, the crowd that was in the area, um, and I think this was a Friday, which I feel like maybe there were more local people who had come in after work and were, you know, trying to, to really, you know, get a, a little bit of the food and wine festival in. And it was just a lot of people. And I do know that I started to get overwhelmed because there were so many people like on top of each other, but I was determined I was gonna get my fried pickles. And so I went and I got in the line. I didn't have to wait in line very long for the fried pickles. Um, and then I was trying to find somewhere to sit down or, I'm sorry guys, I cannot do eating my food on a trash can. I know that everybody thinks that's like a big thing to do when you're at Epcot for the different food festivals. I just cannot do it. I cannot eat off of a trash can. It just, it just grosses me out. So I kept trying to find somewhere that I could take, um, I kept trying to find somewhere I could sit down. And event eventually I just gave up. Like there were no tables in the area that I was in. There was a lot of people. Um, there were some tables um, not far from where I got my pickles, but all of the seats were taken. And so at one point I was just like, I don't want my pickles to get cold because I don't think I would enjoy them as much. And so I just found like a little curb, like it was like a, a section that was like a flower bed and it had like concrete border around it. And I sat down on that in my dress cause I'm wearing the outfit that I had on that day. Um, I had earlier taken some pictures um, in front of the 100 year sign. And um, so I just sat down on that little curb section and by myself and ate my pickles. I will say this was the first time that I really felt like alone at the park and wished kind of that there had been someone that I could have enjoyed that experience with. My daughter and I, originally had talked about going into the food and wine festival together it just didn't ever happen um because you'll see <laughs> a couple of um friends surprised us and we ended up spending quite a bit of time with them um but oh my gosh those fried pickles were so good now if you don't like dill pickles you probably won't like the fried pick pickles but I loved them. I think I had like four or five in my little um, container that they had given me. And it had like some kind of, or it had a special kind of sauce on top, um, but it was nice and crispy. It was still kind of hot. Um, the pickles were like not um they like they weren't soft and mushy they were like crisp the uh seasoning was great like oh my gosh i sat there and i kept saying i don't know if i can eat all of these pickles they're good but there's a lot of pickles i ate every last pickle i enjoyed it immensely and if I could have, I would have gone back and gotten another set of pickles. Like I enjoyed them that much, but I like pickles. So that was like right up my alley. But that was the only time I got to try. That was the only thing I got to try at the Food and Wine Festival. Because like I said, originally I thought I would be able to go back in, but that didn't happen. And so then after I ate my pickles, I did go through the little shop, um, the new shop. Why can't I think of the name? And guys, honestly, it's nice, but I was not in a shopping mood on this trip. And so I had, by this time, I think I had already gotten um, the two things that were on my list and I was satisfied. I don't know if it's because I'd seen so many people do um, videos about the store. And so I knew what some of the merchandise was, but like 
the Epcot Food and Wine Festival merch was not like calling my name this year. And so I walked through it and I noticed that it looked like it was gonna start to rain again. And so I was like, I need to get myself together and go back to the room and, you know, and just regroup for and get myself ready for the next day. Cause again, I was still kind of in pain. And so I walked around a little bit. I never made it into the Connection Cafe. Um, to, I really wanted to go in and like see the murals on the wall, but that never happened. I walked by it on the two occasions that I went in and just never went inside. And so again, my plan was always to come back and get some more food and get on Spaceship Earth and also Test Tracks and Frozen, but it just didn't happen. And I didn't get to see the fireworks, which I was okay with not seeing the fireworks. I would like to see the new one when it starts. Um, so, but the one thing I did want to do before I left is I wanted to make sure that I went over to the um, cool station. Again, I don't know why all of the different names are just not coming to me this morning. So I was determined I was going to go there because that's something my family and I have always done. We've always enjoyed and I definitely wanted to see the new area. Now, honestly, it to me is not as cool as the original, original cool station because it used to have like this theme of like this prehistoric guy and you will walk through like and i understand why they got rid of the like the little plastic strips that you walk through because if you think about it all the people who are touching it and everything so i get that um the floors don't have the sticky feeling to them that the original one did and it's just not um i like the fact that there used to be like individual booths for you to like try the different um coca-cola drinks um but i mean it's nice it's open and so i think it accommodates more people in the new one but i like the nostalgia of the old one so what i ended up doing was i went to go get in line but like people just do not have manners anymore and so i was in line and this complete family came and got in front of me even though i was in line and I'm not going to fight with you about a place in line just to get some Coca-Cola. So I just stood back and I waited patiently until they were done. I did give them a look. <laughs> I will say that. I had my mask on, but I know I gave you a look with my eyes. And so I waited my turn. And then I grabbed the two flavors that I wanted to try. Um, but I will say I like the bigger cups because you get to taste a little bit more now than you originally used to be able to. And so I found um, a window that had like a, uh, it's not a seating area, but it was enough room there that I could sit down and look out the window. And so I tasted my drinks and then I called my daughter and I was FaceTiming, I think I FaceTimed with her. And I was, I wanted to show her what the new cool station looked like because she had asked me so when I FaceTime her I kind of panned around so she could kind of see it and then I was telling her about the rude people in the line I think it, it it was like two different families that just kind of it was like I wasn't even there and was invisible and I was just like wow um so we talked a few minutes but then like I said I could look at I could tell outside it looked like the sky was about to open up and so I maybe spent three hours at Epcot that afternoon it wasn't anything you know I didn't run all over the park but again on this particular trip, it wasn't as important to me to like run over, run to every ride or do a whole lot of shopping. I just really wanted to like be in the atmosphere 
of the park. And I know that a lot of people have said that the parks have changed. I know that the parks cost way more money than they used to cost and that it is really, really hard for people to justify the cost of going, especially when you have like a family of three or four or five people. I get it. Um, I know some people say that the magic is kind of gone, but honestly, I think because I don't go that often and that when I do go, it's just, I'm just so happy to be back that um, I just don't have that same kind of feeling that it can't be magical because this trip was definitely magical for me. It like, I don't want to say it changed my life, but it definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I just came back from the trip very happy and very upbeat and just like hopeful um, for my future and just excited to share my experiences with you all. Um, that's, a, you know, people say that Disney YouTube community is not what it used to be. And I, I can admit to that, that um, that kind of community togetherness that I felt when I first started being a part of the community, that has changed a little bit. Um, but there are people that I have met through this community that I still think are just like great people. Um, I, I think the saddest thing for me was that I missed um, a lot of my friends by like a couple of days. Um, Miss Cherry and I were at the parks at the same time and we were trying to get together, but um, it just never happened. And eventually she ended up being sick. And so I didn't get to see her at all because she ended up like chilling the last day that she was there before she went back home. Mariah of Mariah's Whole New World. I missed her by a week. Um, I miss Karen by like a couple of weeks as well, which was just sad because we had really been trying to figure out how we could see each other. Jen had a whole lot of stuff going on in her life. And so that just wasn't possible for us to get together. So I'm hoping that the next time I go, that I can coordinate it a little bit better with some of my friends. I really didn't have a choice in the dates for this trip because we were celebrating my daughter's birthday and I wouldn't change that for anything in the world. So I'm glad that I went when I went, but I would like to um, make it. Um, I would like to make my next trip sort of a meetup of my Disney friends. So I still believe in this community. I still love the people who are in the community. Um, I honestly think that you make the magic. Um, that there are cast members who still love their job and who make your trip special. I ran into cast members that were um, just friendly and loving and helpful. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Um, I I still enjoyed myself on this trip, even though I didn't get to check off everything on the list. Um, and I'm making this sound like this is the end of the videos. It's not the end of the videos. There are several more videos to go. Um, but I just had to say that um, just because I do believe that you make, you can, you can take a trip to Disney and yes, it may cost you a little bit more than say going to New York City if that's your thing or even going to, I don't know. I don't, Las Vegas and places um, from what I've heard from people, even Disneyland with just two parks can be expensive. Um, in some cases, maybe even more expensive than, than doing four or five days at Disney. And I would say, that's the other thing maybe to keep in mind is that when you watch the videos from people about Walt Disney World, keep in mind, you don't have to do everything that you see other people doing. You don't have to go to the expensive um, restaurants and eat um, at the sit down meals. We did do two sit down meals. 
Um, we had a great time. It was definitely expensive. I don't know. Um, I think I, I mean, unless it like hits and who knows, at some point it may hit a hundred and something dollars per person. And that may be the limit for me as far as Ohana is concerned. But there, there were, our breakfast was not over, over, you know, it was expensive by your regular everyday standards. But honestly, guys, everything costs more money now. And so I just don't want you to think that you have to do all of the experiences you see people do on YouTube. I was on a very tight budget. I had thought about, I had thought about, originally I had thought about doing a video about my budget and then I kind of changed my mind, but I think that I might still do it just to kind of show you that you can, you can stay at the value resort and still have fun. You can eat at the um, food court or the counter service restaurants and still have a good meal. Um, you don't have to buy every uh, souvenir that comes out. Um, yeah. yeah, it will cost you a little bit of money. No doubt about it. You might not be able to go two year, two times a year. You may not ever be able to afford to get a um, annual pass. Uh, or you may find out that maybe getting an annual pass would allow you to go in and uh, see the parks um, a little bit more than you would have if you just went one time. Maybe it works out money-wise for you in the long run to do that. But there are so many ways that you can do the parks if you really want to do it. You don't have to stay on property. Um, there are places that you can stay for a lot less. You just have to actually you just have to work the numbers and see what works for you. If it's something you really wanted to do. I still love the parks. I still get giddy when I walk into the parks. And again, I think maybe that's because... I don't get to go so often. So when I go, it's extra special and I'm excited. There's usually something new for me to see. Um, it's not run of the mill. It's not every day. Um, and so you just have to decide what works for you. Uh, but I'm telling you, if it's something you really want to do, you can do it on a budget and it doesn't have to be um, over the top for it to still be magical. So after that serious talk, <laughs> I, I did not plan to say that in this video. I really just meant to tell you about my experience with Epcot, but it was a, when I went through the clips, I really, I think I had 10 minutes of clips and now I have talked 20, 33 minutes. Um, but I hope that it um, encourages those of you who still want to do the parks. If you have to save for a couple of years in order to go back, that's okay. It, you have to make your trip what works for you. And so I'm just going to leave you on that note. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm sorry it was all over the place. Like I said, it is seven something in the morning, but um, I just wanted to share. I have just been so excited about sharing my trip with you all that I just, something just compelled me to say that is that, you know, um, you guys know what I've been through. You know what it has been like for, for me for the last five years. Um, yeah, I've, I've got some other things going on, some heavy stuff, but I would not have traded that time in the park by myself, that time in the park with my daughter for her birthday, that time in the park with my friends, um, that I wouldn't trade any of that for anything in the world. I, I just had the best time. It showed on my face in my photos that I was enjoying this trip. So for me, the magic is still there. And I'm really sorry for the people that it that it isn't that way for anymore. 
And I understand that um, people change, we grow, our likes and dislikes change. Um, I'm 60, I'm almost 60 years old. I'll be 60 in April. And I'm just at a point in life where I look at things a little differently. And for me, you find the things that bring you joy. Disney brings me joy. And you just live that life. Whatever works for you. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop preaching. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see the rest of my adventures at Disney, um, there are quite a few more videos to go. Um, please hit that little notification bell so that you won't miss when they go up. And until I see you the next time, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.